sorry. I don't have to do it again, right? Because I said um, I do feel a burden of responsibility somehow toward the youth IGFs, toward the youth initiatives, or let's say different shapes of engagement into the IGF. Because I think for the past two years we were concentrating as a secretariat mostly to the national and regional IGFs, which I obviously uh, think it was necessary and it just takes a lot of time given the number. But somehow the youth IGFs were in between and uh, we would just invite them along with the national and regionals. And I think that even though there is um, obviously the same process that the youth IGFs are going through, I think what's being produced is a bit different and perspectives that they're bringing are a bit different and with that very, very valuable. So we try to, as I said this year, to go into the community virtually and ask what's happening within certain countries and regions and reflect that in one publication. So Michael that's sitting next to me worked very closely uh, also with the Secretariat and did wonderful proofreading of that publication. And what we managed to do and, and to realize is that in the community there are basically four um, different models, I would say, of the engagement of the IGF. The one is organized on a level of the national and regional IGFs, and maybe Mahi can later speak about it, um, where, where certain national and regional IGFs within their annual meetings and their processes are organizing dedicated tracks for, for young people, and they are integrated into their annual meetings. But there are also those, um, um, those formations where the youth engages among themselves on their own, and they're independently self-organizing through the IGF process to deliver um, through um, a very dedicated process, certain certain substance. And those are so independently organized IGF initiatives, and currently we have them nine recognized. Um, there are obviously um, those that serve as some sort of a capacity building, uh, where, where, where we are kind of in between the independently organized youth IGF initiatives and those that are integrated into the NRI, so we kind of, um, uh, put them aside as a separate model, as a, as a fourth model, um, and, and reflected that by, by this publication, I do have one hard copy only of this, and somebody took my um, front page. So with that, uh, I actually wanted to see what else can be done. I think we started with this publication, at least we opened this process and showed the willingness that we would like to give more visibility and that we really value what's happening within the community. But it's, um, I think, up to the community now to show the way to channel that will and hopefully uh, leverage the whole engagement um, at the IGF and, and first of all bring visibility to your work. So my question then for you would be, um, how do you see the Secretariat's role there? Maybe also the role of the IGF MAG in terms of your integration into the, into the program. Are you invited as speakers or session organizers? Are you involved in the process? Um, and, uh, and what else can be done? So that, that's my, my very, very concrete question. What do you think, what do you need? What are your needs? And then we can sit together at the Secretariat also. The MAG Chair is very supportive about the work of the, of the youth and uh, sit also with the MAG Chair and see uh, how can we maybe better support your work. Yes, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Uh, this is Yanis from uh, the Asia Pacific uh, Youth IGF. <laughs> uh, well, so I guess there are two things that I would want to mention. I guess the first thing is uh, the content materials and training materials. I think is is some things that we might be can work on together collaboratively so that we can share across region as well. I mean, because uh, it's, it's some of the experience from our support to other schools of internet governance as well within our region. So they're actually looking a lot on, on contents that they can they can use. And I think for youth training as well, uh, we need to tailor some materials, especially for youth. So I guess if we can share that experience, uh, like on issues or topics specifically, then I think it will be useful. And the second point about integration of youth to panels or how they can join in this global IGF. Uh, I think we have been talking about this in Youth Coalition before for, for some time that uh, if we could have like a dedicated section or how to say, a list of youth resource person, because I think some of these sections, they would specifically like to invite youth, but most, of, most often of the time, uh, the new Comers, the new youth, they come, they don't have any connections and they will not be able to like join those. Usually 
only for those who have been participating for a while, then they will have the connections to be invited. So I think that might be something that we can work on as well. Thanks. Thanks so much, Janice. I think this was very concrete. This is actually what, what is the purpose of this meeting. So, okay, maybe Marty and then Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Mahishala from Sri Lanka. Uh, we, even though the first time we uh, created the youth IGF in Sri Lanka uh, in, in the 2017, but in the 2016 event of uh, IGF of Sri Lanka, we had a special design. Each panel should have one, even each uh, one youth into the panel. So we put one youth into the each panel. So he expressed his ideas, his views, and uh, opinions to the uh, whole community. So it taken into the uh, final report even. So it is a good practice rather than creating it uh, separately after the we are created it uh, separately. So uh, I still believe it, it is a good uh, practice to have uh, them into the uh, main national IGF. Uh, to be in the panel and to share their views. Before that, we can have uh, some kind of collaborative sessions with the youth, so they can uh, discuss within themselves and come to the national IGF. Yeah. Uh, this is Dave from Hong Kong. I'm also a member of YCIG. Uh, based on some previous experience on organizing YIGF, I would say uh, because some of the youth also like to organize their own YIGF. They come to us uh, somehow to ask the question about some substance uh, content they can organize. For example, any like role play sessions or even other activities like interactive session can be organized in a sense. Uh, I would like to firstly appreciate uh, IGF said have already made some uh, useful toolkits on how we can organize a national and regional uh, initiative. Uh, youth session is also included in these kind of toolkits. Uh, it provides a very uh, basic ground of understanding of how people can organize their NRIs. But on the other hand is, uh, I think youth also need some brainstorming ideas on how they can actually uh, carry out the whole process and also carry out the program on the program planning. That is the reason why I, I would suggest maybe uh, in the coming terms, we can also create some uh, exchange platform online, uh, hosted by the IGF set, that most of the uh, YIGF participants or even uh, the resource person of YIGF can contribute uh, on that platform. Then we provide some brainstorming ideas for uh, the other youth to follow. Yeah, my two cents, thanks. So, so in, in my experience so far, um, you know, depending on the youth, on the youth um, initiative, there tends to be kind of, there, a lot of them tend to have informal structures. And it's not necessarily a negative thing, I don't mean it in that way, but, um, but I think the IGF secretary would definitely be able to um, assist with this, with maybe high level coordination, because a lot of times those informal structures don't necessarily merit a lot of um, formal interaction within existing processes. So what I'm trying to say by that, for instance, is like, okay, Council of Europe is uh, currently doing a lot to try and advance um, the youth department's engagement in internet governance. Um, so maybe, for instance, working within those high-level structures, um, bec using the, the kind of the weight of the IGF and of the UN system uh, to its advantage, um, the youth sec the, the secretariat may be able to help kind of advocate on behalf of um, that kind of maybe more centralized planning or kind of just trying to reach out and uh, not necessarily coordinate, but at least um, understand which of these um, which of these larger institutions, let's say, are are working on um, intern on youth of uh, youth initiatives, and how can there be um, better coordination between them? Because there's definitely a severe lack of coordination when it comes to youth events. Hello, my name is o o Muhammad Abdul Hak, uh, Secretary General, Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. My, uh, my suggestion and my comments is that uh, Internet Governance, Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum uh, should be uh, running the voluntary organization. So youth IGF is uh, definitely under should IGF, no need separate uh, 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 structure. Because Bangladesh is the least development country, 
uh, here is the so many problem uh, if I, we are organized the IGF uh, financial problem is very big problem though we are own capacity is the arrange a, a, a sponsor and everything so youth IGF is separate is very problem in our country this is my suggestion Uh, Jian from Net Mission and also organizer of uh, YGF Asia Pacific. So um, one of the things that I find is the how to how we make use of like uh, alumni and how we like um, continue their participation because uh, what we f what what I noticed like uh, for organizing the YGF is there are a lot of participants who want to come back but don't have the resource or don't have the um, like they don't know who to go to so uh, what we did this year is we actually had like the fellows uh, have uh, we had one fellow from YIGF Asia Pacific to come to here so um, I feel like we could also make use of like a fellowship network or alumni network and um, yeah Um, Edward Choi from Hong Kong YGF here and in talking about the sustainability of youth participation because uh, we feel that because we are newcomers and actually when uh, attending the third workshop and there are so many uh, specific terms for us and actually maybe for the capacity building is we have to improve because uh, other than the training for our newcomers, I think we can uh, just have some pre-workshop, uh, but not just only a day zero event. Because uh, I think that um, for those newcomers, they can have more understanding about the terms uh, like ICANN or uh, YCIG and other stuff. And I think on the other hand, we can have more social events just for the youth people. Because um, actually um, for us, those people who are new from IGF, we don't know much people uh, in different organization. And what we want to do is, or what we expect is to get to know more people from other, more young people from different organization. And just in talking about the Hong Kong IGF, maybe I think because we just, uh, it is uh, just a starting point. So it's a kind of informal, uh, so we, we hope that we can just, um, maybe um, can organize the Hong Kong YGF later with uh, other organization in order to get a more formal one and to express our, if, uh, our uh, influence over the youth in Hong Kong later. Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie Watson. I'm from Youth at IGF. And we've met a couple of times as a group. There's about 30 of us. Youth at IGF with Internet Society. Um, and we've met a couple of times to kind of talk through what would be positive steps for this program to take in the coming years to really build it and help it be more um, engaged. And one of the things that we keep coming back to is a mentorship program. And not only with alumni of this program helping the future years and getting people adjusted a little bit more quickly and knowing what to expect, but also if there is a way to connect the youth in this program with more established stakeholders. So the, the individuals from organizations, civil society, industry, government, who would be willing to act as a mentor and kind of show youth the ropes a little bit so that they, one, have a familiar face, two, know what to expect, and then three, can start making really meaningful connections much, much quicker because a lot of times we felt like we kind of siphoned ourselves off as youth and had a harder time actually networking and integrating with more established individuals. Yeah, that, thank you for that. This is Michael, by the way, and I didn't introduce myself, but I'm, I was, this past year, um, one of the interim steering committee members for the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Thank you for that excellent point about mentoring. Mentoring is incredibly important. Um, and I think I've, I've, I've been advoc advocating for mentoring for about two years now, because it's, it is so important. And I was lucky enough to whenever I came into the IGF system, I had, um, I was assigned a mentor um, through the uh, ISOC ambassador program, and she, uh, I couldn't have done it without her, really, and she showed me the ropes. However, 
I've also learned that, I, but the, we have um, we have kind of a, a dual issue, and that is kind of what, what you were talking about, Jan, that people come in, they don't necessarily, or I think somebody, I don't, maybe Giannis, I'm sorry, somebody mentioned it, they come in, they don't necessarily know where to go, how to function, et cetera, so they're lost from the get-go, and then whenever it comes to, generally speaking, most, most organizations, they don't necessarily have the, they don't want to necessarily make the time to, to, br to, to bring in somebody and say, okay, let me show you how this is all done. Maybe they would expect that's what the, the schools on internet governance are for. And this isn't a criticism, by the way. It's more about just trying to flesh out this issue because what I found is a lot of times youth, unfortunately, have to find their own mentors. And so maybe even without even just, without even just saying, okay, we need more mentorship, which we do, Maybe it's more like, okay, how do we actually create this, uh, those structures to, to ensure that, that people will have mentors? And I think a lot of that is, okay, how do we help teach youth um, more about where they want to be or how they, where they want to be impactful? And then kind of say, these are the groups of people that are working here. These are the groups of people working here. Getting in through lists, which I know might sound really weird or not a good way. I got into ICANN by being on a mailing list for a year, for instance. I can, oh, sorry. But, but the, the idea is, is that, you know, maybe targeting, uh, encouraging people to kind of find their way even before they get here. And so it's just another idea. If I could offer a quick suggestion, this was one of the things that we talked about as well, is like how would you make a program like this work? Because it is so difficult and everyone here is so busy and trying to attend as many sessions as possible. So we came up with an idea that maybe when people register, ask if they would be willing to be a mentor. And then you could pr offer, say like, um, you know, would you be willing to provide an hour of your time a month before the event and an hour of your time at the event in a mentorship program? And that way, someone can connect both prior and kind of figure out what they want and what list they need to be on. And then when they're here in the first couple of days, have the opportunity to kind of meet someone on the ground. When they're registering for the IGF, for the conference. Yeah. So. Okay. Just as like an application question or a registration. Yes, can I just say? Uh, yes, please, Stefano. From uh, Italy, IGF, and I'm here ambassador of the youth, <laughs> and uh, because I'm not young. <laughs> and and uh, but uh, for the first time this year, we organized uh, a session dedicated to youth, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were really excited about that, uh, and they have been uh, very uh, constructive uh, until. In the end of our um, IGF Italy 2017, they even said, why not uh, we can organize the Italy IGF next year? And, and so the problem is that uh, what I say to them, look, uh, you should be inserted into the channel of the Italy IGF. Having uh, major relevance, let's say, uh, in the program committee and presenting uh, relations uh, and, and things, uh, problems and so on. But uh, if you are doing something that is separated from uh, the snapshot that uh, uh, no, uh, National IGF has to do on the situation of internet governance in the country, then you will not be heard uh, uh, so much. But if you insert into the channel of the uh, national IGF uh, with a major role, then uh, also those, the, the uh, people of the government, the people of the private sector and so on, uh, want to listen to you. And they, they have to take the, the, the engagement uh, just to to, to listen to what the so-called uh, digital natives uh, have to say about uh, uh, the internet in the country. And uh, this group uh, is even wanted to prepare and to spread a constitution of the internet uh, made with the eyes of the digital natives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need something like that because uh, they will inherit uh, uh, 
all the experience that was matured uh, by previous generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stefan. I actually took a lot of notes, and, and you know, the first 10, 15. Yes, David. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just end on the point uh, the two gentlemen have mentioned about um, that they should have a um, crucial um, uh, advantage of having uh, the YIGF to be integrated in the national uh, or other regional IGF. Uh, I think it is quite fair point to make about um, multi stakeholders can be heard about the, the voice from, from youth in this sense. But uh, I, I would say in some cases, probably uh, in some countries maybe, or they have geographical difference or even like political difference in, in different countries. Some of the, uh, some of the moment maybe it's easier for the, the youth IGF to be stand alone. Uh, on, on the other hand, to en firstly engage the youth in the discussion. So I, I would say, uh, again, I would like to thank the I IGF secretary have done a very good job on uh, recapping the existing model of why IGF. It should have four models as I've, I've remember. Some is integrate to the uh, existing NRIs. Some is like separate program for uh, the capacity building. So I, I would say this kind of practice is easier to be shared uh, and, and also different models to be adopted to different countries in this sense. Um, on, on that, I would like to make a suggestion uh, because as other youth have mentioned about, uh, they would like to, maybe some youth at IGF program participants also mentioned about they would like to uh, organize their own YIGF in the coming future. Probably for the next year or the coming year, IGF, we can have a small session in maybe day three or day four, uh, like lighting session to 20 minutes to gather all the YIGF uh, initiative organizers um, to, to stay in a room or even even in a session to briefly share about their models. Uh, I think they, they, they will provide some background or some ideas of how um, the students or even the YIGF, youth at IGF program participants to, to get to know how they can bring the things forward. So I would su suggest in, in this way. Uh, yeah, there's my first point. And the other point uh, is not really about uh, this, but, but, but I would like to say there's uh, somehow, I think there should be have some linkage between like uh, local YIGF and also some regional YIGF in this sense. Uh, I think is we, we need to still think, think about this in, 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 in coming way. Um, not only for the local IGF to, to like capacity buildings on, on this sense, but uh, they like to bring discussion outcomes in, in the local community to the regional level or even in the global level. I, I think it is a, a quite interesting uh, move in, in the coming future to bring the linkage between local YIGF and also the global YIGF in this sense. Uh, yeah, this is my two cents as well. Thank you. Uh, while you're thinking, can I just ask somebody to give maybe a sign-up sheet? I promise I'm not going to email you a lot, but uh, uh, I'm thinking if we're going to, I'm hoping, if we're going to come with the set of objectives, maybe for the 2018, this could be the core group that could be, you know, uh, building on what we agreed now, I mean, what we suggested now, and, um, and help to maybe produce something and that we in 2018 have actually something that's tangible and hopefully help you to, to be better recognized within, first of all, your communities, but I also think um, globally by the, by the global community, just as I think we did with the national and regional IGFs. So Mike, Michael will do this for me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I think this was, a, this is what I really enjoyed working also this year on this publication with the youth um, IGFs because not, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that I worked only with young people, I worked with, with community, but we focused on the engagement of young people, is because everything that we were doing was very much concrete and very to the point. And now just looking at your suggestions, to be honest, I already have a set of actions that could be immediately executed starting from the next year because it's very concrete. But I may just ask maybe, maybe start from Janis because her remarks are first in my notes. Uh, for the for the training materials that you said. So what kind of training materials? Does it reflect the process of the IGF or the ways of engagement or maybe something on the substance? Uh, well. well, I mean, for Namesh and ourselves, we do have some toolkits on uh, 
on a little bit of both, but which we are, we're targeting to enhance. And, uh, and I think those that we, we actually want to share and, and see how we can, if other NRIs also can like try to use it and then we can also improve it together with the feedback and experience. <coughs> and, on, and actually, especially on substance, I think we've, we've always been thinking about like having some different modules and different topics, if we can have that like collaborate together mm -hmm. to work on something, then I think that would be useful because it's always brain draining to think about how to tell the youth about these issues and how to make them interested in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Janis. For the resource person that Janis mentioned, I actually think that we can work on it. Uh, I like very much, and maybe Michael later can reflect it, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, which I think is doing great work within the IGF. And uh, that could be maybe that entity, the, fir the first aid for, for the youth engagement of the, of the IGF, along, of course, with the IGF Secretariat. I mean, there's a focal point, that's me, the focal point position that uh, supports uh, the IGFs organized on national and regional levels, but also the youth IGFs, first of all, in their process. So we don't obviously tackle the, the substance because that's a bottom-up process, but uh, whatever is needed to maybe support in any way the existing process uh, um, that emerged from, uh, from the community, then of course we are there, and I think that should be also done for the youth IGFs following your directions. So basically you need to tell us what to do. I think that's crucial because for respecting the bottom-up principle, we will not come to you and say this needs to be done, even if we have ideas. So that's why it's very important that you are, I think, in communication with all of us and that you actually are very concrete and be free to say so. If you need a publication, then just come to me and say, because we have a dedicated position whose job is to do that. So just be very, very flexible and uh, very relaxing when demanding certain things from Secretariat in that sense. Uh, I think, yes, uh, Katie. Yes, uh, just a quick question, kind of going off of the idea of the existing processes. Is there a way for youth to be engaged in the planning process of the IGF itself? So everything from taking panels to who's on the panel? Of the global IGF, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, or of a, a regional IGFs or national IGF. I'm sure that's something that we would need to discuss with the boards in our own countries, but on a global level especially, that would be a really interesting opportunity and a good mm -hmm. way to get youth both involved and then hopefully represented on panels as well. But that's, uh, that's, I think that's why I also asked at the be beginning. I think that can be easily done. So each session, as you know, at the, at the now speaking just about the global IGF, each session has its co-organizers or co-facilitators. And I remember, I don't think that this year was that much intensive practice in this regard as much as it was last year, when all co-facilitators of, first of all, the main sessions tended to have young people on their panel and involve them in the whole organization of the process. So maybe what the secretariat can do is just pass that message that the youth actually, as a bottom-up, right, community through a bottom-up process, requested to be involved in the planning process. So not just that you are invited for 90 minutes to speak on a panel, but that you actually are consulted for planning certain sessions and then be there to feed in with your substance. Uh, Michael. Sure. I just want to add to that point. So first of all, the, the national initiatives themselves, um, you know, they, they all, e each one of them has their own planning, um, you know, an organizational team and structures. Um, and then the regional, uh, the, or the sub-regional, or the, in the regional initiatives, they, they tend to have um, youth programs completely that, uh, that bring youth into the, um, to the, into the dialogues or to the, to the program. And um, often, especially if they're bottom up in nature, you know, anybody can participate. So it's more about, you know, encouraging youth to, uh, or youth being encouraged to take part in those processes. At the global IGF, I know in years past, I don't know about currently, there were young people and, and youth on the, um, the MAG itself, the multi-stakeholder advisory group. I don't know with the new MAG that's coming in, how many young, you know, young people there will be. I think Marilyn might be able to, to shed some light on that. Um, so that's just a, a little bit more to answer your question. Marilyn, please. Marilyn and then Edmund. Yeah. Thanks. Marilyn Cade. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a concrete suggestion. Um, I served as the substantive coordinator for the NRIs for two years, appointed by um, Ambassador Carklins when he was the MAG, and working with 
Anya, and many of the changes and improvements have really come out of the engagement, the active engagement and the network that we have, that we created. So people had a way to know each other and to, uh, you know, share ideas like this. I would caution you about the idea of uh, thinking that having people on the mag is actually a way to affect the change that you want. I'm not saying there shouldn't be young people on the mag. I'm making a very different point. I think that you should be thinking about how you have a communications uh, link where the, um, so that you're, you're able to sort of serve as a uh, um, contact point. And then at the mag, Anya, my thought is it would be good to suggest that uh, workshops and main sessions, just as we have to focus on gender diversity and geographic diversity, we should focus on age diversity. And so, of course, we'll have old people like me, really old people like me. <laughs> but um, I think that will get you more of the uh, inclusion that you want. So, yes, having people on the MAG, but the, when you're on the MAG, your job is to focus on the program. And but if you create this networking concept, Anya, like you have done with the, the NRIs, then there's a go-to. So when, if we get the MAG to say, diversity includes inclusion of youth on the workshops, on the main panels, and that must be evaluated when the workshop proposals come in and when the main session um, organizers are put together, then I think that's going to get you two things. One, much broader inclusion, and two, the ability to reflect back into your national or sub-regional IGF. Yeah, uh, Edmund here. Just just a quick note. I just want 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 to jump back to the uh, the topic on on mentors. Um, I think we we shouldn't leave it here just like that. I, I there's no reason why next year we can't have it. Uh, and if the secretary uh, needs help, we we're, I think there are more than people more enough people who are willing to to help out, and my me being one of them. Uh, and we, we have the, gr the, the MAG as a group, we have the resource persons, we have the NRI um, coordinators as a group. Th all three groups are, are you know, good uh, uh, pools of people that, that can be mentors. Uh, we just need a process to, to, to match them up and I think uh, they should be matched up a little bit ahead of time so that there's some online discussion between the mentor and the mentee uh, before coming into, uh, into the IGF and that, that, will, that will really help and I think no, we shouldn't just leave it and, you know, another yes, year I goes by. I think you're very right because that's a very concrete suggestion that can be easily implemented because, as you said, we have everything in place. Well, just one question just to clarify. So that relationship between a mentor and a mentee would be in regards to what? To the sessions in the program or to diversity of the, of the matters? Um, hi, I'm Bronwyn. Fro I'm a youth at IGF fellow. Um, Something which uh, Helena and I were discussing yesterday was one of the main benefits of coming to the IGF is also the networking that we get. And I think if we had mentors who were matched up in advance, um, which were similar to our future goals or our field, that would be really beneficial. If, for example, for me, um, coming from a cybersecurity background, it would be amazing to have a mentor who's uh, aligned with my interests that would be such a valuable resource both for the IGF and also into the future as a contact who I can have to support me in perhaps even being involved in panels in the future um, to help me to as a sponsor when I when I go for future internet governance related forums and for Helena being um, wanting to go into something related to medical and e-medicine having contacts in internet governance but more into those specific kind of areas aligned with our interests would be so it would be so valuable for us um, and like if if it's possible to find someone who's uh, a senior person who's similar um, to like supporting us in our goals uh, that would be really valuable I think 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Edmund, and then. Yeah, just, uh, just quickly adding to that, I, I, think, I, I think it's more in general um, mm -hmm. yeah, as showing, showing, showing around. Of course, if, it, if it's a, a specific uh, area, that, that's great. But in terms of format, it, this could happen uh, perhaps uh, you know, a little bit ahead of time in a, in a big web, webinar kind of uh, environment uh, or on a one-on-one -on -one matching basis. I mean, there are, there are a few ways that that could uh, get the, the process started for to meet to kind of match up the, the mentor and the mentee. And you know, I, I, I wanted to add a point because, uh, okay, I'm Edward Choi from Hong Kong YGF and just talking about the language barrier because uh, recently I just uh, visited the booth and talking with other uh, YGF from other region and they said that um, because they want to have some material about the internet governance issue, but they do they have to translate those English words into French or other language and then just from the French to their local language. So I think just for the mentor and mentee program, I think the language barrier have to be considered. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, this was very, very concrete. Uh, there is a also one uh, one item that I wanted to discuss briefly. I think this year we talked a lot about this online exchange platform that should be made for the national and regional IGFs, but now I see there's a lot of enthusiasm and support also here for that networking prior to the on-site meeting. So I will uh, take also the note of this and pass to my management to see whether we will fund resources to, yes, to, to, to help implementing this, Michael. Well, I just want to stress too that, uh, you know, it's, um, we, we also don't need to, in certain ways, reinvent wheels because, for instance, I think we can also leverage a lot of the resources that we already have. For instance, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, we, we, every year we, we update a, um, an ABC's guide to the IGF that we really spell out from the front to cover what is the IGF, how to get involved. And it's, it's not to say that that is the only resource that there should be and that there's, you know, that uh, we also have a getting invi uh, involved in internet governance guide, for instance. That's not to say that we can just like put something online and expect everybody to read it and everybody, okay, great, we got it, everything's fine. No, but it's, there's definitely, you know, we can use what's available already and then just continue to, to build off of that. And uh, I, I feel like I had another point as well, but. I think it was, yeah, no, it's, it's not important. Sorry. Okay. So if you don't have any questions, so what my suggestion would be that um, we consolidate all these inputs received on this meeting and uh, by the beginning of January, create a set of objectives maybe. Sh that, that's why I'm asking to sign up the sheet because I would like to have your emails and then I would share it with you, first of all, for your inputs and for your final approval as these objectives will be then seen as, as, as that they come from the bottom, from the community. And then we will send these uh, inputs toward the uh, higher management to be approved. If approved, in that sense, then we would have a set of actions and a plan of actions to work for the 2018 and meet, I don't know where, but meet at the next IGF uh, with hopefully a change in terms of the youth engagement and the, at the IGF procedurally but also also substantively so that that would be um, somehow my my concrete suggestion from from this meeting uh, also what I've been seeing a lot and that's that's actually when I started thinking a lot about the youth IGS when I started working as a in this capacity as a support to the NRIs so I worked a lot with the national and regional IGF some of them I visited before the IGF so I was aware of what's happening and how important it is for the community. But I didn't have a direct experience with the youth IGF stuff. Up until I went to the, uh, Marilyn will know, to the ICANN meeting in, in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met uh, a lot of young people there. And that's when I realized that there's such a good potential, but that they have so many issues, that they're not mm -hmm. recognized, that they're not supported. And unfortunately, um, when I came back, to Geneva, I started communicating a lot with them, and then I saw there is a lot of capacity, a lot of potential, but it's just spread around the world. Mm -hmm. And the youth, for example, youth observatory is doing great work, right. and then you have the net mission that is doing great work in Asia, but they don't know each other, and they're spread. And then my ambition would be actually to have us in one room and maybe exchange good practices, and Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn Cade. So I'm gonna make a comment about how important branding is. 
the word youth in the UN system means something very different than it does in certain countries. And so one of the things I think you, you all should really think about is helping people sort of debunk the myth that you are uh, actually so young that you're not already working or not already running an NGO or not already engaged in social issues. Uh, because you must understand that in the UN system, youth can go up to 32, but in many countries when outsiders of, from the UN system hear the word youth, they think that means you're still in high school. And some may be, but some may also be running businesses, running NGOs, acting as civil activists. Um, so when, when you develop your materials, I think you need to explain the fact that you are engaged. Myself, when I, in the much earlier days of the internet, um, was an advisor to the uh, internet angels, which were high school students who taught other high school students how to stay safe online. And it was run by high school students. But I'm just saying, when you think, so I'm very positive about, it's not, there shouldn't be an age barrier, but you need to think about marketing yourself, so to speak, communicating yourself, so to speak, about the fact you already are actively engaged, you already are contributing, so that it's, you're accepted from the beginning in some of these, and I, th I see Michael nodding, and, and so I'm looking forward to seeing the faces on those panels change. Thank you so much, Ron. Yes, David, I think has a follow-up. Yeah, adding to the point that Marilyn has just mentioned about uh, branding on youth. Yeah, actually, I have a very keen discussion in the YCIG, uh, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, in the past few years because it, we are on a process to like we we energizing the whole group that we we need to uh, refine our chapters. We have a keen discussion on whether how youth define ourselves as youth because there are a lot of different definition. It's a tough process. I, I know my Moke also know <laughs> know that like. Because they, they, they even divide youth like uh, up to 35 in, in this sense. So it is quite quite interesting that they have a, a large varieties of how we define youth in, in this this area. So I, I would say in, in this way is is quite interesting. Uh, but on the other hand, I would like to also mention about uh, for the youth IGF. I think one of the purposes is like uh, capacity buildings and but at the same time like engaging the youth in the discussion. Uh, but right now, I, I'm thinking in the other way uh, because we want our next generation of the internet to, to engage in the en environment and the ecosystem of IG discussion. Uh, so not only youth, maybe children is also one of the focus in the coming future. Although it is a quite quite uh, a, a long step to, to to move the things forward, but but youth and children are surely uh, the the groups, uh, the stakeholder groups, really to engage. Yeah, children uh, is somehow missing right now, but. We have a lot of work to do, and there's a room for improvement on, on this area as well. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, David. Before I give the floor to um, to Michael, I think what Marilyn mentioned, and also David, you followed up on the this age limit. So I worked on the we worked the NRIs on this toolkit, so that our document that uh, reflects the highest values, principles, criteria, procedures for all the NRIs, and it wasn't easy at all. Because some of, uh, when we started working the toolkit, some had the history of organizing the IGFs for nine, ten years. So now you're reflecting the practices and some things needed to be changed that were already established and experienced. But we worked on it almost eight months, I think. We went through rounds of public consultations uh, to make it uh, bottom up, fully inclusive, and that it re reflects the views of everyone that is fit for all purposes. And then we worked on this youth publication. And when I compare those two processes, Working on youth publication was more difficult for me to leverage the different opinions than working on the toolkit. The toolkit reflected at that time more than 80 countries and regions. That means that I worked with, that I communicated with le at least constantly on daily basis, 150 people. With youth IGFs, it reflected um, maybe 40 different practices, but it was very difficult because of this age range. Um, Marilyn mentioned, yes, there is the UN's concept that I think stops at 24 and uh, that just doesn't fit with so many countries and regions. And that's why this publication says that it's in a collaboration with the, um, with the NRIs and, and wider community, um, that it doesn't reflect the, the UN's views as such, just as Marilyn said. 
but as I said, it was very, very difficult to produce it. And, um, and I liked it because it brought different energy and it also challenged a lot the secretariat, I would say, and all the community just to think a bit uh, maybe differently how we treat the young people. And also one of the very controversial items there was that do we look at the youth as, as a separate stakeholder group? Some were very much for that, some were very much against it, so there were very polarized views on that. But I think we managed to compromise for now. That's why we call it the first edition. I don't know what will happen next year and who will challenge it, but we will see. Uh, Michael, yes. Uh, actually, you st stole the thunder. I was going to say that one of the biggest challenges, I would say, there's a couple. Um, the first thing is, um, so especially if something is youth-focused, youth-related, how much of that is being uh, contributed to by youth? How much of it is rather being t actually top-down? Even if the process is bottom up, it's end up uh, a lot of times. Um, it, a lot of times, youth unfortunately still are being told how to do things or what to do. I'm not saying by you. I'm not saying by the secretariat. I'm just saying in general, um, if youth are not necessarily involved, or if just a couple youth are involved, well, we're not tokens. And this is the pr this is another issue. There's a lot of tokenism with youth. Oh, there's one. It's um, there's you know it's it's. There's, there's a very big difference between having, having a young person involved in the entire process and another thing of saying, hey, look, there's a young person over there. Everybody's happy. It's not the truth. And so um, aside from, uh, from what you said before as well about, uh, about youth as a stakeholder group, uh, youth as a stakeholder group or youth as integrated into other stakeholder groups, that's not even something that us youth necessarily can, youth can uh, figure out wh whether or not we should be different. And the fact is, some of the regional initiatives and some of the no national initiatives consider youth a stakeholder group, whereas others don't consider them a stakeholder group. So it's, it, there's even, even at the, granu the more granular level, there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's that discussion and that debate about what, what happens. Now, I would say, um, aside, uh, in addition to that, to those challenges, one of the biggest that I would say with the YCIG specifically is that it's incredibly hard to organize and to kind of coordinate youth at the international level, seeing as how every continent, every region, every, every, na uh, every country in itself, but especially the regions, they have completely different landscapes for what it means, for what the, what um, youth activists, what youth that are involved in internal governance are, are interested in, what they care about, what, how they see um, youth initiatives um, changing, how they see their involvement. So I would say that, um, I, and this is just really something that I think perhaps the Secretariat could help, help with as well, how do we kind of coordinate over these, these vastly different regions in terms of resources, in terms of, of interests, and in terms of uh, priorities, I would say. Thank you so much, Michael. But yes, Michael shared um, that that uh, that process that we entered with this publication, um, and I think that we learned a lot. We learned how many questions there are that needs to be answered. How do you achieve that the youth initiatives are multi-stakeholder when um, when you when the young people don't necessarily fit into the four core stakeholder groups as per the IGF's classification? And uh, it, it's a bit different. I think it challenged the whole process. It challenged the, uh, the interpretation of certain criteria of the IGF. But um, I think that, that the what's most important is, that is this final outcome. And that means that you are going through excellent programs that um, result in you having more knowledge and, as you said, more contacts and being, being more networked. Um, for the Secretariat's role, as I said, it's really up to the community to come up uh, and um, to come up with a concrete proposal and send their requirements and demands to to toward the secretariat. What I understand and what I've seen is that that's very difficult because somebody needs to channel all that. Because somebody from Latin America and from Asia Pacific region, African region, you're just uh, obviously on different continents. You don't even necessarily know each other. You're not connected, maybe online. And that's why I think uh, establishing those connections is probably the biggest value of the IGF, and that that's some, something that I would commit as a as a focal point, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the community will commit. So we'll have Marilyn, and we have a comment next to Marilyn. Why don't we Thank take you. youth first? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca from Tanzania. Um, I don't mean to take you back, but. Um, 
I believe in the real time and not the meantime. And we talked about mentorship. And um, I just wanted to add, why don't we start now? The youth who are within uh, this IGF, who attended this IGF, and um, I know you've got the contacts of them. Why don't we start by partner partnering them with mentors before moving on to the next IGF? Mm -hmm. So that the ones that came this year are not detached from getting mentors who can mentor them through the process. They have the basic information already, but they need someone who will guide them. They might not be able to attend the next IGF, but I think in the meantime or in the real time, they'll have someone who can mentor them through their careers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe we can take, uh, Mala, would you like? So I'm gonna say two things about mentorships and I'm gonna say something about fellowship programs that I think you really need to keep in mind. Um, first, be specific about what you need from a mentor. These are, if they're going to be effective, they're going to be very busy people, but they're gonna be very interested people. Uh, so be very specific about what you need. Do you need a mentor who can be a spirit guide to incorporate you into the broad IGF? Do you need a mentor who can specifically bring you into um, a, a particular subcategory, such as cybersecurity? Um, so think about that. Also think about the fact that be real, my, this is just my advice, do not isolate yourselves as we are the youth because eventually you're not gonna be the youth. <laughs> so you should think about, uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> so, so you should be, also you don't wanna be the youth, you wanna be the youth perspective that is influencing internet governance policy. You may want to do it through a youth initiative, but you want to have impact today, not just wait until all the decisions are made. So just keep that in mind. People are more likely to be willing to be a mentor if it's a concrete definition. I am a part of the mentoring pilot at ICANN, and um, we have, you know, I, I would just say, do give a little bit of thought. If what you want is somebody who can help connect you, I think, yes, you can start that now, and then maybe, and you, sh you may have different kinds of mentors. So that's my, my second point. My third point is, why don't you think about organizing a lightning talk session on day zero next year that is organized and run by youth and you, you will get a lot of attention out of that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Uday Dipta. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, I would like to make a comment on the initi initiative to create a um, global platform of the youth IGF. I mean, yes, it might be difficult at the beginning, but I think we can start from now. I mean, reflecting from what I have experienced during my law school time, we have this organization, it calls Asian Law Students Association. Mm -hmm. We have it all over Asia, and it has many national chapters. It has local chapters, and we have established our network with the European Law Student Association, which apparently the European Law Student Association able to have an observer seat, I don't know whether it in the uh, Council of Europe or European Union, but anyway, they make it to the observer seat and have their, fo have their uh, voice aspiration to be delivered. And we have also established network with the Australian Law Student Association. So I think, uh, from the perspective of youth, it is possible. The uh, opportunity to engage globally, to have the networking, uh, universal platform and initiative, I think we can make it. And although it may have still be at the embryonic level at this moment, but that's what we have to start to work right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Federic. I'm from Dominican Republic. Last year, I was a youth at IGF fellow, so this kind of initiative is one of the things that could help us keep in touch with internet governance issues. For example, I'm a lawyer, and I started talking about internet governance by this event. 
Well, uh, one of the challenges we have is not only being part of this kind of uh, programs, but also to keep getting involved. I mean, okay, the IGF started and finished, but what can I do to keep getting involved to make the difference? Uh, for example, I'm from Latin America and Caribbean, and other fellows like me decided to do something to make the difference about uh, internet governance issues because we get focused in university because in university you don't talk about internet governance issues and sometimes you talk about it but you don't know that this is internet governance. So we decided to do something and we started a little project called Embajadores in the Internet in Spanish uh, which aim is to give online and offline campaigns to university and youth people to keep awareness about, for example, cybersecurity, uh, safer internet, uh, g digital rights, and so on. For example, this year, we is, this is our first year because we celebrated it uh, the 6th of December, and we did a little ebook, something like Governance for Dummies, it's very easy with basic knowledges and it's always updated. We did it in, sp yeah, well, us, the, the group, the project, the 19 fellows, yes. And this is for universities and young people and everyone who wants to know about it. And it's always updating because every year we would like to, to put more content. And in a Spanish language or? Now it's only Spanish language mm -hmm. because we saw there is a lack of Spanish language uh, content too and Portuguese. We would like to work with Portuguese people too um, bra from Brazil to, to translate it uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much for telling, telling us this. Yes, let's go to David. Hello. And just a quick thought about uh, the mentorship program. Based on, based on some experience of organizing the man, man, mentorship program, I think it's very fruitful for, for the youth themselves. That uh, I would say in, in a, a operation way, maybe we can uh, have to separate into two different groups of mentors. Somehow uh, we can invite the senior members of, uh, of the internet governance discussion, be uh, the mentors. Maybe at the same time we can invite some youth that have already participated in the past as some peer supporters. So that would be a, a, a quite fruitful way to, to provide two layers of support for the newcomers in, in this sense. Yeah, just some quick thought for me, thanks. Thank you so much, David. Oh, let's take this comment and I think we will need to wrap up after this one. Yeah, hi, thank you everyone for your insight. I'm Helena and I'm also from Australia. And just adding on to points that Marilyn and Brigitte made, considering there's so many fellowship programs, it'd be great if there was more collaboration between these fellowship programs because it doesn't just help us network with other youths, but it'd be great to share contacts and stakeholders we've made um, because considering we're from Australia and we heard of the Hong Kong fellowship program, considering we're all from the Asia Pacific region, it wouldn't be great if we could get introduced to these stakeholders via them rather than us always introducing ourselves. Thank you so much. Uh, I also hope that the sign-up sheet is somewhere here, and yep. if you could just pass it to me, great. Um, thank you so much. This was so concrete. And uh, then, as I suggested at the beginning, let us consolidate everything, produce uh, our set of objectives for 2018, share with you, and hopefully implement this while we are still young. Um, you, um, we told you, to be honest, uh, with all your proposals, you just got me also back five, six years ago because that was a bit my way as well, just being Alpha alumni and uh, and other programs. And I'm just hoping that there is, a, that I see that there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of knowledge and skill in this room, a lot of experience, I would say, because it seems to me that you are involved in these kinds of activities. I mean, for some of them I know, but for some of them I'm seeing you for the first time. So that's that gives me hope that maybe this meeting uh, long term could actually produce something in the next year. So I will uh, take the sign up sheet. I will produce uh, maybe a set of objectives, consolidate all these inputs, share with you for your review and approval, and then maybe we can send this over to the community and see what will be the reactions. Because this was very concrete, and I think everything can be easily implemented with just a bit of energy from all sides and mm, dedicating some time. Thank you so much for coming, and enjoy the last day. Yeah, please.